There are countless great video games out there that are unfortunately dragged down by one particularly poor level, chapter, or sequence. Rare, though, are the bad games that have one inexplicably great level. Whether it's an all-too-brief tease of a more imaginative title or an exciting opening that the rest of the game fails to live up to, the occasional diamond in the rough can make playing at least part of a bad game worthwhile. So with that out of the way, I'm Joe from What Culture, and here are 10 bad games with one great level. Number 10. Escape Velocity – Prey 2006 Prey 2006 is a mostly generic first-person shooter following Damasi Tommy Tawodi, a Cherokee handyman blasting aliens and trying to save his girlfriend. But despite featuring rarely represented Native American leads and a unique resurrection mechanic, at the end of the day, it's pretty interchangeable with most other games where you blast aliens or save your girlfriend. But what an opening level! You start out at the bar where you work with your girlfriend and grandfather, talking and performing menial tasks until an alien ship tractor beams the entire bar and everything in it, while a jukebox blasts out blue oyster cults Don't Fear the Reaper. From there, the three of you are carted through some kind of nightmarish human processing trolley. After a mysterious human benefactor sabotages the rail system, Tommy drops into the literal bowels of the techno-organic ship. As you follow the track carrying your girlfriend and grandfather, you fend off various alien parasites living in the ship and observe other abducted humans being harvested for their biomass, until finally witnessing your grandfather meet the very same fate. It's a bombastic, atmospheric intro that does a ton of visual world building in a very efficient amount of time. If only the rest of the gamer is unique. Number 9. Bottom of the 8th – Watch Dogs The opening sequence of Watch Dogs interestingly makes a strong case against the Ubisoft open world formula. Set in a baseball stadium, you guide vigilante protagonist Aidan Pierce as he tracks down a hitman named Maurice, whose attempt on Aidan's life led to the unintended death of his niece, Lena. After torturing Maurice in a locker room to no avail, Aidan makes his escape through the back areas of the packed stadium. Entering the garage, he encounters his accomplice, Geordie, murdering a gang member. With the ball game ending and thousands of people about to exit right on top of the pair, Geordie calls the police to their location as a distraction. Aiden then navigates his way past cops and security guards alike to an escape vehicle, including causing a blackout in order to misdirect them further. This linear sequence is where the game's hacking and stealth mechanics are best showcased, as it never feels as monotonous as it does in the open world environment. One wonders if Watch Dogs might have been a better game if it were actually more linear. Number 8. The Beach – Dead Island Developer Deep Silver notoriously announced zombie survival game Dead Island with a beautifully grim and heartbreaking trailer that in no way represented the game. The full game was actually about as different from that teaser as possible with all its borderline slapstick zombo smashing nonsense. Early on, Dead Island is a blast. The impossible skills, like the boomerang ability that gives a chance for any weapon you throw to come back to you, are a barrel of dumb fun. The analog controls with which you can attack at any angle using the right stick, allowing you to directly target specific locations on zombies to break their arms, legs, and skulls has bafflingly never been replicated. And the tropical vacation setting only helps it feel like a big bombastic zombie playground, as you do battle with undead bikini-clad models and muscled-out beach bros. Unfortunately, each new area of the game is worse than the last. It starts on such a high note before becoming increasingly generic with its settings, characters, and weapons, as the game starts throwing guns at you, diluting and overshadowing the extensive weapon crafting mechanics. Hopefully, the long-awaited Dead Island 2 is taking this to heart. Number 7. Distress – Aliens Colonial Marines There's no denying that Aliens Colonial Marines is one of the most egregious examples of false advertising in the gaming industry ever. After showcasing an incredible E3 gameplay open quotes demo, featuring a picture-perfect retread of Aliens, fans of the franchise were excited. We didn't care that it was just a story about following in the footsteps of the film's events, it had all the foreboding atmosphere, dreadful anticipation, and panic terror that are hallmarks of the action horror classic. Then we played the game, and it was a bigger disappointment than Duke Nukem Forever! The graphics, well, sucked. And worse, the Xenomorph AI was so dysfunctional that the iconic, perfect living organism became a joke, walking into walls and just staring at you as you shot them to pieces. But that first level, okay fine, first half of the first level, still works. Despite the graphical downgrade, it still does feel like being in Aliens. From the disaster that strands you on LV-426 to slowly making your way through the abandoned facility as mysterious, unaccounted for blips start appearing on your motion sensor, it almost feels like a ghost train ride. Unfortunately, it all very quickly falls apart and never recovers. Number 6. Crisis City – Sonic 06 Oh, Sonic 06. Lord knows this barely taped-together mess has suffered humiliation on hundreds of top 10 worst lists over the years. 
For once, though, let's give the internet's punching bag some praise. Muffled, patronizing, backhanded praise, but praise nonetheless. In a game that's bursting with content that's poorly designed, poorly controlled, glitchy, ugly, and outright broken, one segment stands head and shoulders above the rest. Crisis City. For whatever reason, the game that Sonic 06 was supposed to be, a rejuvenation of the lagging 3D Sonic games and a return to the halcyon days of Sonic Adventure for the Sega Dreamcast, all ended up in this one level. While mostly devoid of exploration elements, Crisis City serves almost as a tech demo for the game that could have been. We control Sonic on a downward race course full of running, jumping and grinding, keeping ahead of crumbling roadways, falling debris and so much fire, while bouncing between enemies pinball-like just as we did way back in 1998. It's fun! It's good! It works! Seriously though, why is this the only functioning part of the game? Number 5. Kotsumel, Shadow of the Tomb Raider Developer Crystal Dynamics' reboot of the Tomb Raider franchise got off to a strong start. The first two games take us from the Pacific Isles to the Siberian wilderness as you survive cultists, mercenaries, the supernatural, and the elements themselves. All the while, you're exploring numerous ruins, finding fascinating ancient artifacts. Both games take Lara Croft across beautiful, expansive environments, and Rise's Metroidvania-style backtracking even feels rewarding as areas change as you progress the story. Shadow of the Tomb Raider begins spectacularly with its opening sequence in Mexico. Lara makes her way through town during a Dia de los Muertos celebration before finding the ancient temple she's seeking. What follows is some of the best Tomb Raider gameplay ever, followed by a breathtaking sequence as you navigate the town being washed away in a massive flood. Then the game spits you out into what you'll be doing for the next dozen or so hours, traipsing around hub environments, doing monotonous side quests for interchangeable NPCs. You know, pretty much the antithesis of Tomb Raider. Throw in repetitive elements and a by-the-numbers story that never once approaches the highs of the intro, and you really have to wonder how they fumbled the end of this trilogy so badly. Number 4. Operation Port Armor – Call of Duty Infinite Warfare After introducing sci-fi elements in Advanced Warfare and Black Ops, Activision's Cash Cow franchise finally jumped the shark with Infinite Warfare. From bland levels primarily consisting of grey spaceship hallways to its super forgettable villain, Infinite Warfare never justified its extraterrestrial setting. That is, except in the mission Port Armor, an all-out assault on Earth's moon. You start off with an airdrop onto the lunar surface and proceed to charge the enemy base Normandy style, if everyone fighting in the Normandy landings were driving dune buggies and dodging orbital bombardments. You then go on to assault the enemy in their occupied commercial spaceport before making your way to a fighter and engaging in some Star Wars style dogfights. But that's not all. After navigating a debris field, you board an enemy capital ship and get down to some Gundam-like zero-g gunfighting. The amount of variety is simply awesome and sets a high bar that the game never again even approaches. The action actually feels like Call of Duty with a ton of sci-fi spectacle and new ways of fighting. With more stuff like this and a more light-hearted tone, Infinite Warfare could have been a high point in the series, albeit an incongruous one. Number 3. Kadara, Mass Effect Andromeda Poor old Mass Effect Andromeda gets a little more hate than it deserves. While it was a technical train wreck at launch full of bugs and bizarre facial animations, once all was said and patched, it was a serviceable enough game. However, one of Andromeda's biggest failures was how it took us to a whole new galaxy but kept everything so… mundane. In the game's opening level, characters are blown away by floating rocks, a trope in every sci-fi fantasy story ever. The fact that we then hop between Desert Planet, Jungle Planet, Ice Planet, and another Desert Planet only drives the lack of imagination home. But at least there's Kadara. A mountainous planet, Kadara is the first place that doesn't feel like somewhere we've visited a million times. With its bronze sun, cerulean acid pools, and land coral, Kadara looks like an entire planet that was once an ocean until some mysterious cataclysm dried it up. Just like that, it tells a story visually and sets up an alien mystery that pushes the imagination. On top of that, it's a haven for criminals, making it the most colourful and interesting environment since Mass Effect 2's similarly themed Terminus systems. Number 2. Hoth – Star Wars – Shadows of the Empire While many millennials have fond memories of Star Wars Shadows of the Empire for the N64, the hard truth is that it was not a good game. The camera fought actively against the player, and controlling store-brand Han Solo protagonist Dash Rendar was an uphill battle. However, the opening Hoth level, where you aid the Rebel Alliance in their classic defense against an Imperial siege, was the most immersive a Star Wars game had ever been at the time. As one of the many snowspeeder pilots seen in the movie, you begin by blasting probe droids and ATST walkers. Just like in the film, you make an attempt on the much larger AT-AT walkers to no avail, until Luke figures out how to trip them up by tying the snowspeeder's tow cable around their legs. A daring move that truly makes you feel like an ace pilot. 
You then escape the Hoth base on foot, beginning the game's downward spiral, but the level is linear enough that the camera and controls are rarely a problem. As you narrowly escape in your ship, you end the level thinking, yes, this is Star Wars, only for the game to crash and burn immediately after. And number one, The Light That Failed, Marvel's Avengers. When publisher Square Enix showed off their upcoming Avengers game on stage at E3 2019, reactions were mixed. The spectacular Golden Gate Bridge fight definitely made it feel like being thrust into an MCU movie, but once we got a good look at the character designs, we came back down from that excitement pretty quickly. But the gameplay is what matters most, right? And what we saw of it looked excellent. Better yet, when we played it, it was. Fighting your way through rubble and wreckage, switching between Earth's mightiest heroes as they worked together to stop the assault by Taskmaster and his goons made it seem like this game could be poised to sit right beside Insomniac Spider-Man. Sadly, the rest of the game wasn't like that introduction at all. Almost immediately, it became clear that this was basically a repetitive grind, and that first set piece was designed specifically to demo well, rather than accurately represent the game. Once you throw in the many issues that made this title so notorious, The Light That Failed is a shining example of a great Avengers game that doesn't actually exist. And that's the list, 10 bad video games with one great level. Which levels did you think provided bright spots in otherwise miserable experiences? Let us know, don't forget to like and subscribe, and all that good stuff. For now, I've been Joe from WhatCulture, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at JJPinwheel, or follow my dog on Instagram at Daphne underscore Greyhound, and until next time, take care.